Hello, everyone, and welcome. It is Wednesday. That means it's time for the Topher Spin Meteorites Weekly Hangout. Got a good crowd with us, and I actually had to start, like, pause, guys. Let me hit record real quick. We're, we're getting into it. So uh, we got a good, lively crowd. Um, the default topic for tonight is going to be something that was historic and happened yesterday. Uh, that is the tag event on Asteroid Bennu. So we're going to be talking about that. I'm just going to open it up for whoever wants to, whoever wants to take over. I would be glad to let them show something off. Anyone? <laughs> we have uh, uh, Tony Love with us for the first time in a, in a while. We're for the first time, so glad to have you with us. Uh, Cameron, were you showing something to the camera? Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, multitasking okay. badly. Nice. Well, yesterday um, we were we all kind of uh, hopped online together and a little watch party. Uh, Roberto Vargas, no, I'm sorry, um, Raymond Borjas uh, put it together. A little watch party for the uh, um, tag event on Banu, and I mean, I didn't think that I would be as excited you know, watching a live stream that's 18 minutes delayed, but have something that's happening 200 million miles away. But I'll tell you what, I was like, when, when they were applauding, I was applauding too. I was, I was in my office all my, I, I see everyone's heads are, are, sh are wagging and everyone's laughing along. Yeah, it was, it, it wasn't emotional, like, you know, for the guys who was working on it for 16, 17 years of their career, and his mentor who brought him into the program passed away. It obviously was very emotional and key for him, but you couldn't help share in the significance and importance of what literally just happened for the first time ever. Men have sent a, a man made probe out to space, orbited, landed on an asteroid collected a sample and bring it back to the earth. So way to go, NASA and everyone else involved. Like, you know, pretty cool event. Who, who here watched live, it online? That live uh, optical navigation system that they use to precisely land it in that crater to take the uh, sample was incredible. I'm thinking they're using GPS and we know what happens with GPS. <laughs> Uh, that was uh, that was an amazing piece of engineering work. Absolutely. They uh, initially did not think that they were going to have that much trouble with large rocks on the surface, mm -hmm. and so uh, they had to invent this scheme where they used <laughs> their uh, altimeter radar information. Sorry use their altimeter radar information to create a map of where the obstacles were. And not only, <clears throat> excuse me, did they, uh, did they have to figure out where all the obstacles are, but, you know, 18 minutes, you can't give the thing real-time commands. It has to be done autonomously. That's right. And, of course, there's a huge amount of work on AI for autonomous sort of stuff. But um, what they were able to do with a spacecraft that far away and making up a new plan based on how rocky uh, Bennu was is just stunning. You know, the thing that gets me is the technology that was available 16 years ago is nothing compared to today. And yet they still pull oh. it off. That's the yeah, it was amazing. Thing. It's like the, the just how they totally shifted because I heard like they were originally expecting mostly sand, a sandy surface based on all the data that they had collected from here and, and um, I think a little from Hubble. Um, but then once they got there, it's like, well, this is not what we were expecting. This, yeah. every, everything totally, yeah. totally changed. And not only that, but then the concern was, and I think the concern still is, how much stuff could they actually collect? And I think it's like, you know, the, going back, going to the science idea, it was like, you know, the idea that they're collecting stuff about Bennu, I think it now, they've already identified pieces that are probably from Vesta there 
that what they what they're collecting may not actually be Bennu. It may be stuff that's fallen on Bennu. I mean, it's still going to be great scientifically and you know fascinating for us to learn from. But it's like, who knows what what they're going to actually find. <laughs> So yeah, how, absolutely. how long do they expect it to take before they actually get the parts back, the pieces back to Earth? It's 2023. 2023, yeah. That's soon, really. Yeah. Wow. Now the mm -hmm. the landing place, if I'm correct, was nicknamed uh, Nightingale. Yeah. And two of the reasons uh, that they picked Nightingale that I know of, uh, as, as Pat alluded to, um, you know, the, the approach had to be, you know, rubble free or boulder free actually. Um, but secondly, it was the a dark region uh, of ground. It wasn't a, um, it wasn't one of the areas where there was other contaminants, you know, other, you know, uh, cirrus or or Vesta and debris on it. It was war, one of the the sites that they thought represented the um, the, the the parent body. Now parent body is gonna be awesome. Uh, Bennu. Yeah, the other uh, the other part of it was really interesting too, and 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 one of the big reasons that they selected that particular landing site of all of the of all the possibilities is that uh, it actually in that sweet spot in the middle had some much finer grain uh, material than the other areas around it. Uh, and because their scheme is essentially a, uh, a Frisbee with a center cut out and uh, a, a lip on the inside and then blast some um, nitrogen into that to... Uh, pick up particles and deposit them in this, in this uh, tray, uh, that doesn't work for big rocks. Even when you've got very, very low gravity, that only works for small bits. And so uh, that the Nightingale choice was a lot about the small size of the material. Well, they also restricted on the size that they had it configured for. I think the limit was two centimeters which they, they showed during the presentation yesterday. It's like, you know, two centimeters in one direction, and they could still pick up something that was four centimeters, four centimeters by two centimeters. Um, but, you know, if you have a lot of stuff bouncing around, who knows? Yeah. This, this rock represents a four centimeter by two centimeter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is what they were trying to avoid, this up there. So by going to that area that had fine debris and dust, whatever, that's what they, this is. Uh, it was kind of neat. You know, ASU did a lot of work on the project and continued to do a lot of work on like the, the Artemis project and different things like that. Mm -hmm. But when I went to the open house <clears throat> that ASU has before the whole COVID shut down the world, um, and humans were actually allowed to mingle. You know? <laughs> uh, I'm walking by, I'm, I'm kind of anxiously rushing by all the really, really cool scientific space exploration stuff because I want to get upstairs where the meteorites are. <laughs> and as I'm walking by, I was doing a live for Facebook and I was like, you know, I, I at least got to stop and at least film when I'm walking by. And I happened to walk by the that round retainer ring a basin that you saw with that that was um perforated the actual collection basin that that filters out the two centimeters things that we're talking about was sitting right there on the table and i mean it was it's right there then they had the mars um rover wheels up there as well i mean i'm talking about the actual like whoa so when they were showing that yesterday i'm like ah oh, yeah cool hat i know that <laughs> Well, you're living in a very special part of the world, and uh, I'm hoping to join you there here for too awful long. <laughs> Did you guys see the press conference today and see the, the actual photos returned? No, I have not yeah. seen that info. That's on YouTube right now. Uh, oh. Um, Topher, can we play part of that? Or that I was going like to say, if someone can get it all queued up, that would be phenomenal, because right, I just do don't... That. Yeah, I just can't uh, can't have dead air on YouTube, man. But <clears throat> I did see it did show it did show that they were quite concerned about one large particle. 
Um, I think it was maybe five or six centimeters. But when when the collecting device landed on the surface, it completely crushed that. Oh. So this the, the, all, all all the particles around they were really friable. Yeah, they were really soft. So um, a lot of the worries about um, whether <clears throat> the collecting uh, device would get jammed with larger samples kind of seems to have disappeared because oh, that's, the stuff is so friable. That's good news then, Donald, man, because, yeah. Uh, it, and, and what's really crazy about, like, we take it for granted because we're seeing these images and we're looking at them and they had they had Banu and they, they had Osiris Rex going around it with their scanner on it for a long time. And they detailed, detailed, mapped it. Like, so when they did the animations and flybys and stuff, and you're actually looking at the pictures of, of Banu, you, us, meteorite heads, are, are looking at it going, oh, I wonder if that's CK. Is that a CM or do you see any white chondral? Uh, and it's that good of imaging that we're literally, like, looking at the rocks, seeing if we can identify them as amateurs as we are, you know? You know, when yeah. watching that yesterday, there was an animated uh, slide or something showing bits of debris exiting from the asteroid. And, you know, I know space is very large. And those objects, it doesn't matter if they're the size of a grain of sand, if they had connected with that uh, satellite there, taken the sample, could have destroyed it. And I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering to travel that amount of distance and miss every other unknown, untracked object in the heavens, that, that's a spin of the wheel. And I mean, you know, you got a 50-50 chance. You're either going to make it or you're not. Well, we hope it's a lot more like 99.999, you know. To, to, well, well <clears> but yeah. Trying. There, there's think, there's a risk to everything. I think Bennu emits particles all the time, and I think the scientists were quite surprised at the amount of particles that they that this collision uh, by by the spacecraft actually released. And one question was asked uh, in today's conference: Would the particles released actually create its own meteor shower when when uh, the mm. two the orbit of Earth and the orbit of Bennu uh, coincide? Oh. And the scientist says, "Well, that's a very inter interesting question. So there could be." A new meteor shower event, which could you know result from this collision, That's which I amazing. thought was fantastic. Yes. Yeah. The uh, uh, the particles ejected from Bennu, though, when you're up close with the spacecraft, the relative velocity between that particle and the spacecraft is very very low, so it's just going to bounce off. It's yeah. it's the stuff that's going at orbital speed that uh, and and most of that uh, space junk. Uh, is in Earth orbit, most of in low Earth orbit. So, you know, after you get out to where the thing is, where Bennu is right now, there ought the the there ought to be a scarcity of particulate out there. Now, here's an interesting question because uh, us <clears throat> us meteorite heads, me med heads, we love classes and classifications and. And when things like there's a new fall right now, a witness fall from Morocco called Tarda. And currently it's C2 ungrouped. I've heard semi officially that it will be reclassified uh, quickly and it won't stay that way all the, all the time. But there are some ungrouped, carbonaceous ungroups. And just by looking at Bennu, we can tell it's probably a carbonaceous. So it's a carbonaceous parent body. All right. Now that we have a return sample in 2023, can those ungrouped con uh, carbonaceous chondrites that we already have now, will they fit into the Bennu class? Will there be a new uh, CBs for uh, Benkovenites? But imagine if there's a CBN. Or, yeah, you know, something for or maybe Osiris or something like that. They could fill in yep. some missing holes. CB is already taken, yes. <laughs> uh, it's quite possible. And uh, unfortunately, we've got to wait until 2023 um, to do it. But boy, can you imagine, you know, that's a couple of years from now, quite possibly some refinements in the techniques we have now. 
and quite possibly some new techniques. Um, it's going to be amazing when that material lands. Uh, we'll see how widely it gets distributed and how much there actually is, but that's going to be an exciting time. Bruce, have you heard how much if they've collect if they have a, a, a amount of how much is collected? No, I think that's in the next day or two when they there's actually a procedure that they can basically reweigh the the spacecraft. Mm. Um, and what they're doing, they, they there was something in the uh, um, in the presentation about that. I've got it queued up for uh, where they show the photos. Awesome, yeah. Uh, I, I noticed you had your hand up. Is that what it was for? Yeah, that was what it was. Awesome. Let me let me go ahead and or why don't you go ahead and share your screen with us in place? And right. I think you need to share audio as well. I have no idea how to do that, but we'll see if I can figure it out. Let me yeah, know. Um, uh, let's see. Share computer sound. Yeah, this is volume was kind of low go. though. Um, so I'll see if I can crank it up. Nice. All right, let's see if I got this. Oh, we can hear screen. you better now too. It's all about monitoring this real time telemetry from the spacecraft as we watch the events unfold 200 million miles away. And the question that came up over and over again in that live broadcast was when are we going to get the images back? When are we going to know how the sampling event went? I can tell you, a lot of us were up really late last night. Uh, we were watching the images come down one by one. By about 2 a.m. here, local time in Denver, we got what was what I call the money shot, where we saw tag sand contacting the surface, and then the effect of injecting that high purity gas down into the asteroid regolith. So I think without further ado, uh, let's just go and take a quick look at the data. Uh, I'm going to show you a series of images taken by the SAM cam. This is about twice the frame rate, so we're coming in a little bit faster here. And I'm just going to let that play out. I'm going to let you appreciate it uh, one more time as we go through. And then we've got some analysis that we can perform about what happened here. Maybe one more time. It's just so cool. I must have watched it about 100 times last night uh, before I finally got a little bit of shut eye. Uh, and then I dreamed of uh, a, a wonder world of Bennu regolith particles floating all around me. Uh, so just to remind you what we're looking at here, uh, this is a, a full-scale model of the TAGSAM head. Uh, and so this is what's at the end of that long robotic arm. You can see it's about 30 centimeters or about a foot in diameter. And this is what we placed onto the surface of the asteroid. Uh, it's at the end of the robotic arm, and the high-purity nitrogen gas feeds in here through a couple tubes, and then it actually comes out through this inner annulus and pushes everything up into uh, the collection chamber. Uh, let's take a, a, another look at just a couple of the key images uh, right before contact and right after contact before the gas is fired. So there's a little over one second uh, time difference between these two images. And there's an enormous wealth of information about the asteroid surface contained in here. Uh, so the first thing that you can see, if you look at the area right above about the 12 o'clock position on the sample head, uh, we're making contact with a relatively large rock, a little over 20 centimeters, which we had considered a potential obstruction to sampling. But uh, literally, we crushed it. Uh, when the spacecraft made contact, that rock appears to fragment and shatter. Uh, which is great news uh, because that means that ingestible material by TAGSAM is probably being created just by the motion of the spacecraft uh, pushing into the surface. If you look at a couple other areas around, like this one here about 1030, just off to the upper left of the TAGSAM head, you can actually see motion uh, in the regolith. So it looks like we are pushing and, and exerting a force throughout this soil on the asteroid surface. Also good news for uh, our potential for successful sample collection. I want to point out another feature of the TAGSAM head that didn't get a lot of attention yesterday. We talked a lot about the gas stimulation and driving bulk sample into this filter. But as you can see in this 3D printed model of TAGSAM, there's a whole series of circular disks. Uh, on the flight hardware, what's mounted in here are contact pads, literally made out of stainless steel Velcro. And these are designed to pick up material on the order of a millimeter size and smaller. <laughs> so the fact that when the TAGSAM head is making contact with the surface and it's crushing what appears to be a very soft, 
friable material is good news not only for the bulk sample collection, because in our laboratory tests, when the tag SAM head penetrates, and we're estimating about two centimeters of penetration at least uh, during this event, a lot of material gets forced up into the sample collector. And of course, by crushing, you're going to drive a lot of material into these contact pads. So right away, bottom line is, from analysis of the images that we've gotten down so far, is that the sampling event went really well, uh, as good as we could have imagined it would. And I think the chances that there's material inside the tag SAM head have gone way, no, way up based on the analysis of these images. We're going to take a look at just one more sequence now yes. after the event when the gas oh, bottle gets fired. Look at that. You can see that particles are, are flying all over the place. We really did kind of make a mess on the surface of this asteroid, but it's a good mess. It's the kind of mess we were hoping for. Look at all those Lots fragments. Of material uh, giving us additional confidence that we actually push material up into the sampler head. And just a little bit of the timeline here, uh, we made um, contact, about one second went by, the gas bottle fired, uh, the gas was blown down for about five seconds, which is as much time as we were hoping to get to collect that material. So the system seems to have performed nominally, the surf uh, nominally, the surface of Bennu behaved very well. Uh, and so everything that we can see from these initial images indicates sampling success. Uh, we still have some work to do. Awesome. We're going to go through our entire procedure, including uh, what we'll hear from so uh, Sandy cool. later in the day about the additional activities for sample verification. So in case you can't tell, I'm pretty excited about all of this. This is great news. Uh, and uh, I'm going to turn it over to Rich to talk about the spacecraft performance. All right. Here. Nice. That's so cool, man. Now, here, here's the – I saw – animated and i don't know if it was animated or 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 the, what the frame rate was or what the timing was but i saw a video of it going down boom and doing that and when they say it's the tag um touch and go i mean they barely touched it it, it looked like they they went up to it and just boom and, and they were gone i don't know if that does anyone know if that represents a real time or not because it looks the like same, it the stop. same one that was 1.25 seconds, I think. Wow. Yeah, the, um, the, the, the arm that that sample collection head is on uh, had, the, the, they talked about it in the, in the live video, it had a thing where it contacted and then a spring is compressed. And with the mass of the spacecraft driving towards, the, towards Bennu, they, uh, they had a significant contact time. Uh, yeah, and the, I I have not seen that video. Thank you, Bruce. Of of all of that, okay. I, think, I think the actual everywhere. the actual contact time was six seconds. They said in that six seconds. Okay. Yeah, I think the 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 release time for the gas is five seconds. So very yeah, cool. The, and the video I saw must not have been in real time because the entire uh, the entire video was only like four seconds long, and it was the approach everything. But yeah, well, they, they, they haven't downloaded all the data yet. So, you know, they're, it's probably like every other frame or whatever. Gotcha. Okay. Now, here is, we, every week we play the guess the weight of the meteorites. All right. And unfortunately, Pat, you don't get to, you don't get to submit a sample this week. Really? <laughs> <laughs> He's all queued up. And it's a carbonaceous chondrite. <laughs> oh, it is. Oh, okay. Then we'll, okay, we'll still do it. We'll still do it. I, it's we'll, not friable, but it's a carbonaceous chondrite. Okay. We're going to have two <laughs> guess the weights then. Because uh, uh, as, as we know, uh, Osiris, the, the sampling arm, can collect. They were the 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 base is they want to at minimum twenty grams like every lab does, but they said that the arm could actually hold up to two kilos. So, how much did they get? Uh, so I heard I heard that I heard that they were looking for a minimum of sixty grams, and the most that they can carry was two hundred grams. I heard two kilos. Did anyone? That, it's, I heard two, ki two kilograms. Two okay. kilograms was maximum, but they wanted at least 60. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and find the, the segment where they talk about how they, they're going to figure it out. Um, oh, yeah. That's yeah. actually, they're doing it with, uh, I think, a centrifugal force by yeah. spinning it around. Yeah. 
exactly so sort of excitation of the spacecraft and then you you mm -hmm. monitor how fast it accelerates and you can back yeah there's, there, there was part of that on there so let me see if i can find i wonder if they were surprised at how friable this material was they may well get the volume they anticipated but will they get the weight since this is so friable oh yeah good point yeah the friable ones do tend to be low very low density yeah yeah, I like when he said we we not only landed on it, we crushed it. I was like, that's cool. And the stainless steel Velcro, who thought that idea? Give yeah. that guy or gal a gold star. Amazing. <laughs> now I heard him say something about matching the velocity <laughs> of the asteroid. So uh, that was playing a big part in uh, for them to make that tag. Now I didn't seem to notice the asteroid uh, rotating on any right. form of axis or anything, but I guess that was a pretty pretty risky move in itself. And a, and a day, they measured four hours for a day on the asteroid compared to, you know, 24 hours here on Earth. Right. Yeah, yeah one, of, one of the burns that they did was to put uh, the orbiter, or well, <laughs> became an orbiter, <laughs> put put the spacecraft into an orbit that exactly synchronizes with the orbit of Bennu, and that allowed them then to have a different frame of reference and to be able to go straight down and straight back up. Mm -hmm. Right, you the, definitely want to be the, in a Newtonian reference frame for something like this, just to simplify all the math and all the calculations. Right. Right. And Nightingale, since it's closer to the pole, it actually rotates less. So speed wise, so it's it's easier for them to even get to it. They were coming down at, I think, 10 centimeters a second or less as they approached. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so, so Topher, we got to try and uh, try and guess the amount of mass in the uh, collection. Yeah. I, I was, you know, knowing that the range is 60 to 2,000 and it was friable and there was debris everywhere, I'm going to go a little bit on the high side of one kilo. I, I'm going to go like ones, one, 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 one. That's my guess. We got a little bit over a kilo. Yeah, I'm in for triple nine, 999 nine, nine grams. Nice. I'm in for half a kilo, 500 by on. 333 grams. I'm just guessing. I don't know. 120 for, grams. I'll go for 800. Yeah. This is the great thing about joining us on the lives because you get to play along and do stupid stuff like this. Uh, also, um, I wanted to I wanted to mention two things before we go into any show and tell. We can we definitely can keep, keep on talking, um, but two things I wanted to mention. Uh, I think it was two weeks ago, I did a little intro and we did a, a little uh, uh, thing for, for Leon who was watching in the UK. And then on Facebook, uh, I, I put a little post up there. If anyone wanted to donate, I would match the funds and make sure that uh, Leon got a meteorite for, for himself. Um, well, I appreciate everyone's support. And like I said, the community is strong. So uh, with, with my doubling of, of the funds and, and the four contributions we got, I will not only have enough to send Leon uh, his pack of meteorites, you know, a little bit of everything, all three classes, but his brothers will get a little box as well, a gift as well. So thank you guys for, for your help with that. I appreciate that. That was nice of you. Nice. And then uh, secondly, uh, we are planning a Franconia... Arizona meteorite hunt this weekend, and that is October 24th, uh, 2020. So if you would like to attend, please reach out to me on Facebook or comment here on YouTube. And while I'm doing house cleaning, like and subscribe. Right. Does anyone have anything they would, they'd like to show off like that uh, carbonaceous pet? <laughs> well, we could do that, yes, that, and actually, uh, we have a choice of not one, but two carbonaceous chondrates. I have the so, video queued up, too, about uh, what the next steps are, if you're interested. If you yeah, want. let's go for that, Bruce. Yeah, okay. yeah. If you're ready for it. 
Yeah, give me one sec. Get the right. Okay. All right, you guys seeing it? Yeah, I was right. Yeah. Reporting nominal performance at this time. We're not working any issues. We did see a number of additional bright objects in our star tracker, not unexpected, seeing what came off the surface of Bennu, and that has all now cleared. So coming up, we have a series of spacecraft activities that's going to help inform us on how much sample we've collected and give us a little more insight into the spacecraft subsystems. Um, our first event will actually happen tomorrow, and we've got an animation showing what sample imaging looks like. So we're able to articulate our arm and the tag SAM head over our SAM cam, which will take a series of images. We are hoping that we can see lots of sample entrained inside the sampler head. We'll also be able to see evidence of sample on those contact pads, any dust that may be on the arm or the sampler head. So that'll be the first activity to help us determine just how much sample we've collected. Then our second activity is our sample mass measurement, and we have a second animation showing that. We'll extend the arm and spin the spacecraft. Now we've done this activity before, so we've got a pre-tag, and this will be our post-tag. That way we can compare the moment of inertia, which will help us determine how much mass is actually in the sampler head. We do also have a spacecraft checkout planned early next week where we'll get an opportunity to do some engineering checkouts of some of our redundant components as we continue to trend the spacecraft, which looks just absolutely amazing after what we put it through yesterday. Right. I, I think it's absolutely amazing what we are able to do sending stuff out into space, whatever. Um, I, just got, I just got this, another flown item from NASA. No, I'm sorry, this is, this is a spare, uh, a spare um, grounding strap. And I actually got a two pack. So uh, uh, glad to say that uh, Pat Brown got one of those coming to him as well. But uh, some really cool stuff when you think of, and I know we're, we're years from this, but with the events that happened yesterday, astro mining, is now potentially you know a reality if you can go there and grab two kilos of carbonaceous why can't you go somewhere else and land and drill and bring back a 50 pound hunk of unobtainium roberto vargas has his hand up unless someone wants to answer that rhetorical question <laughs> <laughs> what's up guys Hey, Vargas. So um, I wanted to show off uh, a package that I just got today. So this is, uh, we were talking about it earlier, Tarda. Oh. Yeah. So I got about uh, 15 grams of it. You're not joking, are you? Yeah. Oh, look at that. And the density some... of this stuff is really low, right, Roberto? Um, it's it's super fireable, but it actually like weighs a good amount. There's oh from what I was reading, um, there's like there's magnetite in it, and I think that that affects it um by making it a little heavier. This one's really cool. This one's fully crusted, both sides. Ooh. Yeah. So like this this piece is um one point one grams. So I guess I don't I don't know. Normally like if you were thinking of if if we're thinking of like a a regular chondrite, that would be about it that would be about the size of a gram, right? It, 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 that looks big for a chondrite. Seems big for me. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it seems kind of big. So yeah. in, in general, the, uh, the, the carbonaceous chondrites are in the sort of uh, 2 to 2.8 gram per cc, very rough range from memory. Okay. Whereas, you know, ordinary chondrites are in the 
you know, three gram towards, and once you get to H's, you know, a little more than three grams per cc. Dude, that is yeah, a nice so, little button. Yeah, yeah, so I've got I've got some weighing and sorting to do. That is, Should be. Nice. That is fun. This work. is uh, that's four grams of hmm. of dust. And the more you touch it, the more dust you're gonna have. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I, I, I bought like. I bought pills um, to to stuff these stuff that in. Gotcha. Like those uh those empty capsules. Yeah. yeah. This one's really cool. This one's like uh, fully crusted, oriented rollover lipping on this side. Wow. That is fantastic. Yeah, some of the material that Juan had we had. Uh, you know, the, the oriented shape and then also uh, brick points around the periphery uh, frozen in time. Look at that. Oh, my God. You see it? You see the little, like, oh, yeah. Little every you can totally see the, the um, 360 degree lip, man. Yeah. The wow. uh, the official MIPL write up uh, actually states that it's pretty low density. It doesn't give you the density of it, but it, it has that in the write up. Hmm. Is it? This is fantastic! Wow. And we actually have. Um, well, yep. I, I don't want to cut you off. I, I'm no, no, tired. that's that's good enough. I don't. Okay. Yeah, I I, I definitely didn't want to cut you off, but I do want to let people know that we have. Um, uh, Juan Avidas with us from from Spain um, with Jurassic Dream Fossils. And uh, so I, 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 let me highlight you, buddy. Hello, how are you? Hey, uh, my best well. regard from, from Northwest Africa. Oh, you're, oh, that's right. I'm sorry. You're not in Spain right now. <laughs> no, I'm in Northwest Africa, a little Africa because uh, all the connections are beginning to be blocked again with the, with the ships to Spain, to France. So we are beginning to experience again the same, the same bad situation of some months ago. So we hope the flights uh, will not stop. <laughs> wow, man. I love the shirt, by the way. <laughs> Do you mean for I, shipping I, I have, or I for flights? Yeah, I, I have right here some uh, some of my big uh, of my big pieces of tarda. I would like to show you. We want to see them. Yes. Oh, that's cool. Uh, uh, by the way, the, uh, um, Pat, don't worry. Your your shipment is right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Wow. Looks nice. Wow. Look at how light the interior is at the bottom. Ooh, that's pretty. I have right here. Wow. Let me. Uh... So beautiful. That's an amazing shape. Yes. Ooh. Sorry, the camera is not too much good right here. Anyway, let me show you this one. It's also a complete one. Wow. Wow. That is so I'm going so to I'm trying to look at that crust. Mm -hmm. Let me show you, for example, this one. little oriented shields yes let me uh i have right here maybe here maybe here uh a lot of shipments so all is in his models but right here let me all of this is part of venus i think <laughs> <laughs> the price just went up <laughs> let me oh uh, mm. uh. Sorry for the camera, it's not too much good. Yeah. Anyway, 
I'm so I'm sorting material because I have a lot of work to do. Now, just but, so uh, everyone, just so everyone started. knows, just so everyone knows and understands, uh, Juan is is a personal friend of mine. Uh, we've done some business together, but we're 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 more friends than business uh, by uh, by any stretch. And Juan is actually one of the main mass holders of Tarda. So when you go on the Met Bull, the Meteorite Bulletin, where the official uh, publication of the meteorites are made, um, you'll see his name listed as part of the main mass holder. So I just want to make sure everyone knows that we are, we are talking with the real deal McCoy here. <laughs> uh, it was a really long uh, and uh, hard uh, month of work uh, with this uh, material. So I'm happy. I must hold there. There is a lot of people involved, uh, uh, as normal, a lot of people involved in this new material. So uh, I had a chance and I only I take the opportunity because I'm close to Morocco. I'm, uh, I live in Spain. I know very well Morocco. So I only had my opportunity. So I'm happy with that. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you were, because you and I chat um, back and forth. And I'm just really happy that you've been able to to get, I almost said sneak in, but there's no, you get in and get out and get material in and out because um, there's no, there's no freight containers leaving uh, Spain. Uh, there, there's no, there's the, a lot of the borders are shut down and um, just getting people across, let alone uh, product is hard enough these days. And, and Juan's been out there uh, fighting in the fields for these stones and, and collecting all he can. And part of being a main mass holder uh, is you, you obviously have to make some of those samples available to uh, laboratories. And, um, you know, meteorites are not always about dollars. We, we love talking science, but the real hard numbers about it is we're talking that this meteorite is fetching about $500 a gram right now. Um, so, the fact that 20 grams of it has to go to science, it has to come out of someone's pocket. It has to come out of the people, the, the main mass holders are the ones who, who are going out of their way to make sure that, that this is getting in the correct hands and getting um, studied right away. Yes, and if you look at the information in the Meteoritical Bulletin right up, uh, there are several people, uh, at least six, that have given samples to various different uh, universities. So the uh, the finders and those in the field and people like Juan have been very, very generous with this material to the scientists, which is important because to a lot of us, that's where the big value is, is science. Absolutely. Um, I see a hand raised of John. We want to go to you if you're ready. Sure. Yeah, I just uh, nice. just picked up a little. Uh, it's not going to show up well on here. A little piece of, uh, and I don't know how to pronounce it, Karabali out of Russia. Is Might that a witness, Paul? Um, I don't know. It's not on the uh, COA. Hmm. Um. It's an H5 chondrite. Um, just picked it up from uh, Mirko Grawl. Out of yeah. That's probably his classification. He does. He has a lot of them. Yeah. So um, it's pretty cool. That's it. Nice. Awesome. I'm getting, I'm getting some echoes. I don't know where that's coming from. I don't know. Someone's got an echo going. Yeah. Can everyone mute if you're... Let me see here. There we go. Whoever it was got it. Um, does anyone want to show something off or continue the conversation about uh, space exploration, astro mining, anything like that? I've got some stuff to show off, but I want to make sure that, that Juan uh, uh, presented all, all of what he wanted to. He is, oh, absolutely. He is yeah. Important. Yeah, Juan, did you did you have uh, more to share with us? I know you mentioned that you may have some oriented. Um, no, no, no. Your brand new classification, your five kilo. 
I, th I think he's trying to connect right now. Uh, he has a little spotty, uh, not, not the best uh, internet coverage in Northwest Africa. Um, but yeah, uh, he just got two more classifications. He sent me, showed me the message um, today that he has two new official classifications in the books. And uh, there are meteorites that I had at my house after Tucson. Um, uh, the Jurassic team went on to do what they wanted to do. And then I, I sent the box over there to Spain. So I actually got to enjoy that big five uh, kilo chondre for, for a while. And now it's official. Congrats okay, here's one again. Yes. Hello? There you go. Can you, can you hear me, Toffer? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, I, I have I have some uh, some bad connection right here. So I'm sorry about this. Uh, I'm going to yes, I'm so excited because yesterday I received the uh, email from Christopher Hare that this uh, it's the the um, the classifier that is classifying uh, uh, this this new material. It was a surprise actually. It's uh, one of of my um, uh, of my own find. That's right. This is the first there are two small fragments. It's my it, yes. So uh, because I had the um, the exact coordinates, uh, um, actually it has an O name. So uh, the name is Tasharin 002. If uh, my screen, I'm going to show you uh, where is the where I can share my screen right here, maybe. Uh, Very bottom center. Uh, Compartir share. Yes. Okay, you can share my screen. You can you can see my screen. Yep. Yep. Tazadine. Oh, this is the message. The message that uh, this is the message. Uh, the following metroids has been approved uh, just uh, yesterday. Tasserin 002. It's an chondrite with five kilos. It's this. Let me show you. Wow. You can see well. Mm -hmm. So I'm so excited because he has his mm -hmm. own uh, name, and uh, actually I'm uh, I'm the finder, so it's so exciting. It's my first time in uh, in one uh, found mate, right? So uh, I'm so excited about this. Congratulations! Well, yes, cool. congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And in the uh, by the way, in just uh, yesterday also was. Um, was classify another another um, another chondrite. It's an uh, it's this one. It's finally it's an L L four uh, six. So what means? Let me show you the texture that right is here. Wow, L four six means basically that uh, the matrix has uh, four uh, texture uh, uh, four, but with class of uh, petrological type six. All the big class of this type four are uh, of petrological type six. So it's an L L four six. This one. Cool. Yeah. So that's so, so that, excited about this. That would be um, uh, wouldn't it? That would be. Four dash six, not four slash six, right? Uh, uh, repeat, Tober, please. Yeah, on the classification, uh, it's LL three six, but between the three and the six, is there a slash, a hash, or a dash? No, no, it's it, it's it's no, 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 it's it's okay. an L L L L four six four six. Four six, but in between the four and the six, is there a, a slash or a dash? Be um, what 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 hmm. means is uh, the the petrol the um, the texture type or is the typical brachiated uh, brachiated uh, texture, but uh, hmm. the petrological type six is designated by the class. The class are all of them are of petrological type six. So uh, this is the okay. reason because the so so the, that's going to uh, be a. That's going to be a four dash six then. Yeah. Because yeah. there's, there's yeah. two different ways they can classify it as a four dash six or a four slash six. And this would be a four dash six because it has all the class in between four, five, and six are all inclusive in that piece. That's beautiful, man. Yeah. Yeah. So I was going to say show yeah, that. So show uh, H uh, or eight five again. 
okay, sure. And let me touch it in no, zero no, no. The uh, the one that you were just the one that you were just showing um, that the other chondrite. Um, the there other was one. Yeah, the, there was one picture um, that really, really showed the differences in the in the brecciation of it. Um, oh yes, of course. It was. Let it's me, titled me... yeah eight five. It, the one right next to that. No. This one. Um, go. The one uh, before it. The one before that. On. Um, there you go. That one. That is. Can you zoom in on that one for me a little bit? It has metal, but uh, not too much. Let me show you the texture right here. That is wild. That is a massive. Let me. Uh, that is wild. That is massive. Yeah. Let me show you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So another classification. Man, <laughs> that is great, man. I, and I'm I'm expecting to have my uh, my two uh, classifications updated uh, and on the net bowl momentarily. So I, I can't can't wait for that to happen. Um, <laughs> but yeah, congratulations, man. Good good job, and and congrats. Thank on, you so much, Sofer. Yeah. Thank you. And, and the, the, the great thing about doing it the right way, by collecting all the scientific data, all the GPS coordinates, and being scientific about it, means that you can now don't have an NWA 1300 or 13,000, whatever, you have your own name. That's, that's phenomenal. That's, that's yeah. <laughs> hard work and, and, and good work pays off. Yeah, the Boy, only the only the only problem about the uh, the only problem about this type of uh, this type of uh, work is it's a long time waiting, long time waiting, long time waiting. But finally, uh, all if uh, all if worth of it uh, because. But uh, I must I must to uh, I must to uh, say that uh, I'm an impatience man. Uh, the patience is the, is not one of my advantages. But anyway, uh, uh, finally, uh, ha happy day arrives. <laughs> it's great because you and I don't sleep, so we we chat at three a.m. either my time or your time. We're chatting. So <laughs> yeah, great. yeah, yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy, Topper. That's crazy. Anyway, I'm really happy to be here. Yeah. Well, we, we love when you, when you check in, man. Um, hey, Topher. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, I was going to say there, there is oddly enough, usually the slashes are between um, adjoining numbers, like a four slash five, because they can't really refine it to one or the other. There is an L four slash six in the Met Bowl, NWA five, three, seven. I think it's the only one of its kind and they couldn't refine it. I guess between a four, a five and a six. Wow. So it, so it's a four hash six or four hash seven four hat a uh, slash six yes four six wow man okay thank you for that uh we have pat brown with his hand up okay so first thing i gotta do is brag about my new uh thing i bought off ebay this is the <laughs> official oh. osiris rex uh, cool. asteroid sample return mission patch I think there's still some of them out there on uh, on Facebook. And then, uh, okay, if I can do this. That's freaking awesome. I still can't believe we did this, man. Yeah. The, this is one that I've been meaning uh, to share for a while. You see, is the chondral no it's not up there um you have to try. share that app there we go there we go okay that one share okay so there's shoot now it's still showing there we go the rock okay um well there's a chondral there on my my uh we we see there oh you do see the, the yep. you see the chondral 
Yeah, the orange mm -hmm. chondro. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So this is uh, the CV3 uh, that Stephen Amara uh, had oh. um, uh, just before uh, Tucson, and then I bought I don't know two or three more pieces of it at Tucson. But it's it's really interesting. And th this picture is taken with a combination of reflected cross polarized light with a little bit of incident light as well. And it shows like in this area, you know, in inside this chondral is a piece of glass. And there are some others as well. This is glass. And then some of the ones out on the periphery are glass. And a few of those have little blebs, little spherical blebs of metal, like mm -hmm. this one here, that are just floating in the glass. And it is the cooler. It takes a lot of dinking around with the lighting to, to until you can see it. But uh, really, a very interesting thing to see under the microscope. That is absolutely gorgeous. Now, is that an armored chondral? Um, excellent question. Uh, th there is a layer uh, around here that is uh, darker and. Uh, well, because of the lighting that I use, this, this mm -hmm. should be glass. There are some armored chondrules in this uh, meteorite, but this one, the really dark material is, uh, is, is glass. Now, yeah. you know, this is glass and it even has some weird uh, angular shapes on it, mm -hmm. which, you know, glass is amorphous. So I don't, I don't, I don't completely understand this yet, and it's something I'm still looking into, but uh, quite often in meteorites, when we see shock veins or what have you, they'll be glass, and they're very, very fine particulates of glass that's sort of crammed together, and I think that's what this black uh, surrounding around this chondral is. Okay. Mm -hmm. what, what's absolutely crazy is if you, you know, we're all looking at the one in the center, but if you look at midnight, look at that crystalline structure it's just like yeah. almost pulverized then yeah, yeah the, the one right there at one o'clock is even different but at three o'clock looks like someone actually drew a picture of the universe with round planets floating in it yeah, yeah it looks like a little solar system doesn't it yeah. I, yes absolutely i don't know if i'm smoking enough stuff over here or not see but i'm <laughs> seeing stuff <laughs> yeah if yeah, you haven't got is, uh de-vitrification de of the glass going on there? Yeah. Um, there is um, some, especially in the CO3s, there's some uh, de-vitrification uh, of the glass that, that forms some of the phytosilicate sort of clay particles. Uh, but I think in this one, uh, I, I don't think, at least in this little bit we're looking at here, I don't think I see any of those signs of, of de-vitrification. Now, I, I'm learning. This is something completely new to me. Mm -hmm. But uh, do, do you see signs of, of de-vitrification? Um, not, not really. I'd, I'd have to look at it properly. But, I mean, if it's not de-vitrification, yeah. then what the hell is it? It's, it's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and uh, this one is a, uh, an oxidized CV3. Uh, but in these glass bits, and there's some other uh, chondrules that are just entire gla entirely glass, they definitely have uh, little blebs of either straight up metal or um, sulfides or something, but they're very spherical. They, they you know, they, they have that... Um, you know, like a completely wetted solder ball sort of surface tension look to them. This CV3, is it, is it reduced? Uh, this one is oxidized, actually. Okay. We have just like with a pure, with a pure metal blebs, so it may have been a reduced one, but no. Yeah, you'd thought. Um, and and I, don't, I don't understand enough of the science, and it's something very recent that they've been putting in the classifications of reduced or or oxidized. Uh, this is one that Daniel um, uh, classified for us, classified for Stephen. So you're welcome. There's a yeah, from Anthony in the chat. 
He says, Pat, sometimes the grain size is so fine, it doesn't allow light to be transmitted through it. So it could still be olivine peroxine and not transmit uh, light. And not, okay, yes. Yeah, if, yeah. If, the, if the grain size is small enough, right. And, and, that's, and that's the process where shock veins become dark and, and don't transmit light. Okay, well, so anyhow, that, that, that's, I've been trying that's to. Amazing. That's a beautiful picture, man. And I, I will, um, uh, after we get back from, uh, from hunting, um, I will try and uh, put some more uh, photos up. I'm trying to get my, uh, my big camera. Uh, I just bought a full frame um, lensless Nikon. I've been trying to get it working on the uh, on the polarizing microscope, so there's a potential of of even better uh, even better photos. So, oh wow, that's okay. awesome! Cool. So, here is oh, I got to show off another patch first. <laughs> oh yeah, gloat, gloat, gloat. That's the oh. robotic uh, <laughs> ends met yeah. one. Nice. So this is a CV3 that I bought from Matt Streaming. Matt Stream wow. of Streaming. Right. Speaking of, he said hello, and he's uh, not able to make. He may be able to make it later, but um, yeah, we're actually going to be at the Franconia thing. I was going to uh, say he. You, you scared me when he said you, he's not going to make us. Thought you were saying no, Franconia. no. I'm sorry. All I right. didn't mean it like that. But right. uh, tonight on the stream. Um, okay. Wow. Speaking of stream, you know. Yeah. CV. That's so that, that was the buried side. We just looked at this is the exposed side now. Yes. And this one's got some really nice. Uh, AI is in it. And then the other one up here is a also from Matt Stream. Uh, and this one is a it's not classified yet, but I do intend on, on classifying it. And it is a a SO3. With an interesting fractured side, uh, but some and has a cut surface here that I will uh, I will clean up, and then I'm going to cut a uh, a type sample off of the back here. But it has some amazing tiny little chondrules in it. So this is the one we're guessing the weight on. So. Uh, and that's an inch cube. Yes. I was going to say that's a gigantic centimeter. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a patent pending. No, <laughs> one inch cube. Okay, I'm going smaller than I thought. Then. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's fairly thin. Now, again, remember this is a carbonaceous, carbonaceous. so it's going to have lower density than. A, uh, it may be low, but I, I did my guess. I did my best. Nice. Yeah, every week this is awesome. We get a new guess the weight uh, meteorite. So once we exhaust your supply, we'll have to have a new volunteer. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I've got a few yet that I haven't uh, nice. that I haven't exhausted yet, and I don't know it exactly where they are in the house, but having a big house and losing stuff for a while and then finding it, it's kind of exciting. <laughs> uh, yeah. That sort of thing. Yeah, I can't wait till I'm senile and I get presents every day. Oh, look at this. That's, that's yours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mike Kelly okay. has his hand up. So everyone put your guests in the chat. I see it's populating and we'll go to uh, Mike Kelly if you're ready. Yes, he is. Graham. So uh, the other week we were talking about Sudsbury, and that got me motivated to uh, go and find and procure a piece of this. Ooh. So that's anthraxolite. So it's a super, super high uh, carbon content 
uh, coal uh, for all mm -hmm. intensive purposes with a little bit of ash in it and a little bit of moisture, but it's usually wow. like 90% pure carbon. Um, and that was one of the original minerals that I guess got them interested in, uh, in looking at the mineralogy in, in Sudsbury for uh, if it was important, mm -hmm. you know, prior to them kind of hitting it up for the, uh, the nickel content. Um, and that was because I guess there isn't a whole lot of coal up there. So, so coal is actually very important. Was that created by the event or is that just naturally occurring? Uh, I think it's, it's naturally occurring to a degree, but I have, um, I, I think the, uh, the event had, it, it's basically, it's kind of pushed into veins and cracks along with uh, quartz and some other stuff. Um, so I have a feeling that uh, maybe the impact had something to do with kind of helping kind of spread it in there um, mm. because it is only found in two very small tight veins uh, within the, the Sudsbury crater. And what's kind of cool about it is, uh, is both of those sites are now closed off, I guess, one of them because it's right next to where they're actually doing um, nickel mining. Um, so I was able to pick up this piece and I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and to tie it together, I'm, I'm jealous of you guys going out and hitting up Franconia this weekend. Uh, mm -hmm. So us East Coasters don't have such nice hunting ground nearby, but uh, a couple of us are headed up to Herkimer Diamond uh, to find double terminated quartz, which interesting yeah. enough ties to this because they find black uh, chunks of anthraxolite inside those uh, double terminated quartz uh, yes. a lot of hey, times. That's that's cool. and the matrix looks just like uh, the Herkimer matrix it has a resemblance yeah. it's yeah. tad greenish gray uh but that's awesome yeah it's gonna be fun so that was that was fun and then last week we talked about irons so uh yeah no, that got me uh, motivated and i was glad that, uh, that i got these in so i two of the 14 uh chemical group breakdowns i got a mount dueling there uh to knock that out so that's a one of 11 uh type 1c irons ic irons and then I got tiny little bit from uh, the post I put up before on Met Club for uh, for cutting of Balambola. So that's a type two F one of seven. Yeah. Uh, little bits from from helping out with the cutting. Cool. So that's everything I got for the week. Mm, uh, really? Do the Herkheimer, um, you know, double terminated quartz uh, things from New York? There is it very common to find petroleum? inclusions in them or just the black uh, coal sort of inclusions? Depends on where they're from. The Sorry, the ones that are from Pakistan, I've seen uh, a sort of uh, bright yellow goldish that is actually fluorescent. Um, yes. And I got some of those at Tucson this year. Um, I actually but, uh, have one that has a, a wisp of the, uh, car, uh, the carbon in it before it congealed into a solid. It's not smoky. It's actually a wisp of vapor before it actually coalesced into a solid yeah. in a Herkima diamond. Interesting. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I've well, seen some I think the, uh, the ones it's crazy. Get the water and hydros more than I think the petroleum ones. I don't mm -hmm. think the petroleum ones are that common or, or present at all in Herkima. They're, uh, they're, they're, well, they're know, the, making a the bunch out of uh, Pakistan, I believe, and they're beautiful. They've got yeah. multiple inclusions, very you'll, crystal clear. You'll see a rainbow effect, too, in a lot of the, the faces on the Herkimer diamonds there. And uh, they're, they're saying that's a sign of, of, of petroleum. And you get some in hydros there, but uh, that's, that's the uh, actual water that's uh, trapped with inside the Herkimer. They're very interesting and a lot of fun to collect, but you got to work for them. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. At Tucson this year, there was a, a, a Pakistani uh, uh, mineral dealer, and he had a whole big old tray of them. And I was asking him, you know, are these, you know, with the petroleum? And he said, no, no, no. The ones from Pakistan don't have petroleum in them. Uh, but, you know, I had my, my light that I whipped out. And it's like, sure enough, the whole not the whole tray, but bits and pieces everywhere are glowing like crazy. So I bought uh, Pakistani Herkimers for the non-petroleum uh, UV fluorescent ones. So pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I don't know you might have just there. taken it as a misnomer for hydrocarbons more, uh, more broadly. Mm -hmm. but. Mm -hmm. Now, if you mention Pakistani Herkimer diamonds to 
somebody in upstate New York in the Herma, Herkimer uh, district, Diamond district, they're going to tell you there's only one place you can find real Herkimer diamonds, Herkimer County, New York. The rest yep. of them exactly. are all fake. <laughs> exactly. They're imitations. There you go. There's a gentleman from uh, St. Uh, Joseph College in Rutland, Vermont, uh, who's done a five-year scientific study at uh, Diamond Acres in Mohawk County in Fonda, New York. Uh, and it's all about the Herkimer diamonds. It's, it's pretty interesting. And he's constantly adding and, and updating it. It's more than you ever want to know about Herkimer diamonds, but that's his particular uh, particular passion and uh, it's worth can... a read you can find it on the uh, internet I'll can... reach out to you that sounds interesting absolutely please do thank you thank you. you're welcome Perfect. we uh, have uh, we have Ron with his hand up so we'll oh, okay. yeah uh, come over to you and yeah, then, I that... oh uh, yeah go ahead um, Juan, and then we'll go to Ron. <laughs> oh, okay. sorry. Sorry, no sorry, problem. sorry. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead, Ron. I'm sorry. We're, we're with you, buddy. We're, we're sticking with you, Juan. I'm, I'm really sorry. I had so bad connection. I, I'm really sorry, Ron. My English is terrible, so I confuse no, no Ron problem. with Juan. We're good. So, no, please, go ahead. Go ahead, you. I will Oh, there he goes. Yeah, it looks like uh, his connection is, looks like your connection okay, is going. Okay, I've just so. got a couple things. There we go. Uh, let me try and change my screen here. i got a few, couple of Munderbillas i like to just show off real quick if my screen thing works. Munderbilla. Let's see here. Well, it looks like it turned, oh, I just stopped the video. Just a minute. Start the video. Uh, just a second, guys. It's like mm -hmm. my camera messed up. Just a moment here. I got to turn this off. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, there we go. All right, so what this is, I, was, I got on, on an Australia kick a couple of years ago. And um, this is a Munderbilla that I bought back in, I guess, 2016 or something. It's about 186 grams. And this is my first actually iron from, from Australia. I have several others, you know, Henberry and all that. But this one looked, kind of struck me. If you look at it right, it looks, it looks kind of like a bunny rabbit if you look at it just right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of why I bought that one. But then, so that, that was 186. So about six months later, I came across this guy, about 270 grams. It's a... Mm -hmm. Got a nice little nodule up here. Oh yeah, look at that. I just love these kind of Very shapes. Very prominent. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, so I thought, okay, that's all Montrebellas. However, that's more of a natural patina on that one. Yeah, oh yeah. They're all they're all natural patina. The lighting is not so good. You know, they're they're kind of rust colored. Let me see, try to turn this light on just a minute. No, is that better? Yeah. Yeah, whatever. I'll just leave it like it was. All right. Anyway, so then about uh, Six months later, something I've never seen before, Phil put on a 670 gram monster. And I never see these online. Wow. The thing is gigantic. Amazing. Pound and a half, so I went and bought this one. I got all three of them. That's but, a henberry, buddy. No, these are my all Mundrabellas. Okay, I'm just joking. Uh, <laughs> this one to make sure you knew. <laughs> No, I do have a smaller henberry from the one I showed last week. It's kind of nondescript. If you want to see it, I'll show it. Look at those big holes, man. I know. They're, it's huge. Yeah. But look at the size of those craters. Yeah. Yeah. Mundabellas are famous for having a yes. considerable amount of, uh, of uh, sulfates and yeah. hides and other sorts of things. So that when you take a big slice through one, it's uh, it's like one-third sulfides and two-thirds metal. Yeah, yeah. And they, they wear out. You get these. So it's almost like pyrite, essentially. Yeah. And uh, uh, 
uh, Haig, Robert Haig, has or had a huge one that was about uh, the size of a bushel basket. Uh, well, yeah, you know, but you know, the, the cost, the cost of yeah. that. <laughs> but he ha he had it out by the swimming pool, and the kids would climb up on, on top oh, of it dear. and jump into the swimming pool off of the top oh, of the. Oh my god! You must <laughs> yeah, it, it, it made me cry. Oh, you think all, all the chlorine <laughs> yeah. from the pool? Oh yeah, oh, absolutely. Man. So that's my Mundrabella collection. Man, those are nice. We, yes, yeah. Sir. Uh, Any I, one I, of those is bigger than my biggest one. <laughs> I, I got on a kick. I got about five or six rocks from Australia. I mean, I'll show a couple in a week or two. But I, I got off on a kick, and I just thought, well, oh, these are kind of good. I kind of like Australia. I had the I had the good luck to visit there about eight years ago out of Sydney. Cool. Um, I was on a business trip. We had about a week there. But um, beautiful country, like nice people. Um, I did get a chance to get out and do a meter, I think, unfortunately. So. Yeah, the uh, the 2022 uh, <clears throat> Meteoritical Society meeting, provided we're over COVID and all that nonsense by then, uh, is going to be in Perth, Australia. Uh -huh. And uh, Perth is, no, no, Australia is a very, very large place. It but is. Perth is only about three or 400 miles from the Nullarbor Desert. Yeah. So I'm uh, scheming on uh, renting a ute or, uh, or something to... Uh, to go do a little uh, hunting yeah. in the Nullarbor, or at least walking around in the Nullarbor. Yeah, my, uh, my experience in Australia, it, it's a it, most of it is desert. It's mm -hmm. uh, it's just uh, all, all the outback. I mean, I, I went on a thirteen hour car trip with my contact down there. Just like to drive. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he started driving, and he just wouldn't turn around and go home. You know, so finally, uh, we just drove and drove and drove and. Wallabies and kangaroos just popping out all over the place. You almost hit a couple of driving. Have you ever gone 70 miles an hour down a dirt road, washboarded with wallabies coming out at you for like, oh, I was hanging on. He had one of these cars. 40 mile dust cloud behind you. Oh, God. He drove me crazy. The longest straight piece of railroad track in the world goes across the Nullarbor. I wouldn't doubt it. There's a there's a road that goes through there too, and I think it's the longest straight piece of the road, but I'm not positive. But that that piece of railroad track is the longest dead straight piece of railroad wow. track on the planet. <laughs> well, that, that's all I've got for today. Well, now we go to Juan Juan Raviles. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, can, can you hear? Okay, I, I, I'm going to talk quickly because my connection right here is terrible. So uh, <laughs> I have some uh, good, yeah, I have some good news. Uh, uh, a few weeks ago, we, uh, we, um, uh, we have the notice that some other uh, new with nest fall, uh, fall uh, close to here in the Alnif area in South Morocco, but until now, no one finds nothing. But uh, a few days ago, I received the first pictures of what seems to be the first found uh, rocks for this fall. Uh, I don't have seen uh, them personally, but they have some pictures, seems to be a really fresh uh, like L6. So I'm going to share uh, my screen, I'm going to share with all of you uh, what I said the other day, we'll try to visit uh, some of these days because they are like two, 200 miles from here, but I will try to, to take a look. Seems so really fresh and with the impact mark. So oh. maybe it belongs to that with Nesset Fall or maybe not. But uh, for me, it seems that probably. Let me show, let me share Absolutely. the screen. Uh, okay. I want to see these Okay, freshies. you can see. Not yet. You can see my screen. Um, not yet. Yep. Yes, there we, we can. Oh. Right, oh. right here, you can see the main mass. Uh, right here, you can see the impact uh, oh. the, with the. And it uh, seems. Yeah. Look at how thick the. Uh, but I don't. I don't see this personally. So. Wow. Yeah, it's so fresh. So fresh. And you can totally tell the skid and the impact broke that chunk off. Yeah, yeah, let me. Uh, the evenness of rocks that are falling until low. Yeah. So 
So wow. I don't know if it belongs to this witness at fall, but uh, for sure it's so really, 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 really fresh. That's very fresh. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's got to be. The fusion force is just amazing. Yeah, yeah that's got to yeah. be before any sort of rain or dew or anything like that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I I, I, try, I try to I. Try, I try to visit the guy that is the owner of this. Uh, he's the only one that know the stream fiel. But the problem, the, the problem right here in South Morocco that it's happening is all people that is hunting or is looking for meteorites. That is uh, the most part of the country is looking for meteorites right now uh, after the crazy things of the new carbonaceous. Uh, the problem is that the people is beginning to ask for high price in everything. Uh, they think that everything that falls mm -hmm. is a new, unique, and absolutely crazy. So, for example, when I ask for the price of this uh, new with nested fall that seems to be probably an L6, uh, they, 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 they ask me for a crazy price, like, like if it's a Carbonaceous or, or, or Martian or something like this. It's, man, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an ordinary con, right? It's fresh, of course, it has more value, but, uh, but uh, not, not all is Carbonaceous, not all is Mars. So sometimes yeah. it's a desperating work right here every day. So, uh, but excited to, to see some, uh, some new things and traveling every day. That is the exciting part of this war. Also, Tyrin, I, 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 I must recognize this also, Tyrin, but uh, in that moment that you see something new, it's, 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 uh, it's a good feeling, of course, it's a good feeling. Yeah, absolutely. Man, I'm, I'm so glad you check in with us every single week, so definitely appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Juan. Ah, I, I don't want to forget. I, I yesterday I was cleaning some uh, tassa with some blaster, and I found by surprise some uh, crazy shapes in uh, in uh, in some tassa. I would like to share with you because they are really really funny shapes in oriented ones. Go for it. These are tassa irons. Uh, let me. So no, no, tassa is. Uh, 859. Let, let me, yes, let me show you. Okay. Okay. Oh, wow. This one. Yeah. The bullet. The bullet. Just like normally they are. Yeah. Anybody? Yeah. They Normally they have some, uh, some uh, extreme shapes. Oh, they are covered by rust. <laughs> Pat's coming out of his chair right now. <laughs> 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 Pat, you're muted. Yeah. Pat, you're on mute, but you're going. Pat is going ape shit for that. Oh, he crazy over so there. badly. Yeah. All right. Um, one, the bullet shape one that you just showed, the the longer the, the first one you showed. Do you have that yes. one? Yes. Okay, I want Let to me... buy that. Is it... That one. Yes, I want to buy that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, right? Yes, let me, let me know what you're about to do. <laughs> I, I have something, something similar to this. It's not exactly the same, but it's similar. Let me... I'm sorry, guys. I'm just dying over here. <laughs> I yeah, know my it's... friends in their media taste so much that as soon as I saw it, <laughs> I knew I, I was uh, looking at Pat, and Pat is going apeshit behind his monitor. I mean, like, he needs to put out the pen's undergarments, and he's on mute the whole time, and I'm dying <laughs> over here. Use, use that. You say we do this funny shape. <laughs> That's all. I, I want the brother, the brother to this one. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> looks identical. Wow. <laughs> oh. Dude, yeah, so. that was crazy. <laughs> oh man, I I was I was dying over here, guys. I I, I couldn't help myself because just just last week uh, we had uh, him showing off this this bullet, this uh, Sakota Lynn bullet. Could you imagine the Taza and that one side by side? Yes. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So, let me know your price, one. 
<laughs> I, I'm sorry, Pat. This one is not for sale. It's for my personal of crazy things. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> All right. uh, I want to see if I can share something with you guys. So bear with me one second. Um, All right, let me see if this playlist will it work. Photos. Oh, man. It, oh, there it is. Medheads. Where the heck is it? Crap. It's not going to let me do it, guys. Um, I, I had, uh, had a bunch of pictures set up that I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, of me and some friends, but let me do this real quick. Um, let me just share a second screen. Uh, uh, let me do that. You know what? Let me stop doing that. That's not working. I'll have to get it set up for it. Does anyone have anything they want to show off in the meantime? I need to minimize this real quick. Uh, let me just pause recording real quick. Uh, there was discussion of a camp spot uh, about two point uh, south of uh, the Franklin exit. And it looks like the better part of the strewn field is actually on the north side of, of I-40. But um, I'll be there, and uh, uh, I'll have uh, the cell phone. Looks like the cell phone coverage is going to be really good in this area. And I'll actually uh, also have uh, ham radio 2 meters and 440 with me as well. Nice. Uh, I will be out there as well from, um, let me see here. I'll be out there as well um, Saturday, um, Saturday, the 20, well, Friday night through probably Monday afternoon. Uh, I'd like to camp, but unfortunately right now my garage is in a state of disrepair as it's being reconstructed and I can't get to any of my camping equipment. It's literally in the worst spot possible and I cannot get to it. So if people are camping out and I can share some equipment, great. If not, I'm going to be huffing it to a hotel. Okay. Yeah, I was being pretty flexible. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, I was going to be pretty flexible about it as far as my expectations. You know, if it turns out that, like, you know, a hotel is the fastest way to just get out there and do stuff, I was open to that, too. So, um, yeah. sounds like some people might be camping and others might not. Yeah, I'll, I'll be camping in my uh, steel tent. So, you know, uh, for and uh, my understanding is the nearest hotel rooms are in Lake Havasu City, uh, roughly 30 miles from the area where we intend to hunt, um, and and most all of that 30 miles are on uh, Interstate 40. I had uh, Eric. Um... Uh, well, I just blanked out on his name, Rasmussen, uh, stopped by yesterday at my house. Uh, he gave me his GoBug 2 to use, and he let me know that um, kind of where to go. Now, the, the hike from where you park your car to where you're going to be hunting is about a, a mile, mile and a quarter, and it's not the nicest territory. So if you stay out there and camp you're avoiding about three miles of hiking every day plus an hour round trip plus you get to smell like um camping fire smoke so that's a bonus <laughs> um so i'm going to try to camp out that's the goal because i want to stargaze i want to be out there with my well, meteorite friends and, and see something go by that would make me happy well, Tober, I, have a, I have an extra eight person tent and i i think you seem like a pretty tall dude so if you want it you have it. I mean, yeah. not to keep, but to use over the weekend. Yeah, let's. Uh, you, you're going, right? <laughs> it's up to you. It's yeah. extra. I'm yeah, de sure. definitely, br definitely bring it. We'll set it up. Yeah, and, for and, sure. Uh, I, I basically got. Uh, yeah. 
I have a whole kitchen I'm bringing too, so it should be good. Okay. Camping stuff and all that. We can talk more about it after. Absolutely. So we can just get back to it. But um, yeah, uh, anyone who wants to talk after. I want to yeah. um, show this to people because. Hang out uh, uh, after the, the uh, recording ends for a bit and uh, exchange phone numbers, et cetera. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, this is something that uh, my wife is doing. Uh, to help me out in commemorating uh, the 12 days leading up to Halloween and my crazy meteorite friends. <laughs> <laughs> so just know that whenever you appear on Topher Spin Meteorites, I own the rights to you forever. <laughs> so, so I'm not going to get any royalties for the use of my face there? No, you signed it away. Oh, wow. I, I actually do have a lab, though. This, uh, this is the meteorite lab. That's why, that's why we put you as the, as the crazy scientist. Holy crap. And there's the disorganized part of it. But oh, good Lord. Uh, I just bought a couple of those big old wire racks from Costco. So the disorganized pile on the floor is going in there. And then there's the uh, the microscope lineup. The far one is a uh, Leica DM750P LED um, uh, polarizing microscope. The middle one is a Leica MZ6 uh, zoom microscope. And the nearest one is a Leica MZ12.5 that has a micrometer that's the size of a beer can on it that's one of the uh really fancy uh uh mitotoyas that reads out to one micron oh. so this thing is set up as a uh a tool maker's microscope mm -hmm. and so they use them uh and you can see there's a few uh various uh experiments for different lighting LED schemes there that are get your Nikon you know. plugged into it on top. Um no uh uh I, I have a Nikon microscope or two but uh all of the ones out here are all the Leicas. Okay. And then uh some various uh laboratory grade uh Sartoria scales and then all the the saws and the laps and all of that hoo ha mm -hmm. are out in the in the garage, but that's that's the workshop. This is the lab, so yeah. that's why we had to have you as a mad nice. scientist, man. Yeah, <laughs> I, I actually had hoped that um, Matt Stream joined us today because wait till you see the one I post next. Uh, Matt <laughs> yeah, he's busy uh, preparing a very big sale over at his eBay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Cameron, the last video that I put up, uh, Cameron was a, a vampire bat flying around, uh, and he looked amazing. Uh, the next one, the, the main DJ is going to be uh, Matt Stream. Uh, right now, we're going to go to Arthur, who has something for us, I think. Uh, yeah, I wanted to uh, direct this to, toward Pat, and... Uh... He recommended this this uh, book, uh, Field Guide uh, to Meteorites. Uh, you know, meteors and meteorites. Mm -hmm. I really am enjoying this book. It's uh, I highly recommend it. So thank you, Pat, for bringing that to our attention in the last hangout. You're yeah. very very welcome. Welcome, Arthur. Uh, I. Uh... I am definitely an advocate for getting every book you can get your hands on. That I, I think if, if people are interested in meteorite hunting and in the uh, petrological thin sections, I don't think there's a better book than that one that's in print right now, period. We, uh, I, I, some of the newer guys may not know him, but uh, Oh Richard Norton, uh, was a, a uh, larger than life figure. He was a, he was a professor, uh, but had a, a skill for writing. And so 
Rocks from Space First and Second Edition, the Field Guide to Meteors and Meteorites, and the uh, third one, which is downstairs someplace, uh, is the Encyclopedia of Meteorites. It's out of print, and it's it's in the 150 to 200 buck a copy sort of sort of price range right now. But uh, it's also an extraordinarily good book. Um, highly recommend all three. Yeah, and that was actually a gift from you to me that, that the uh, meteorite oh. guide. Um, this is one I just picked up um, last week. This is one I just picked up last week for myself. Um, yeah. And I'll tell you what, it, it is, I didn't know it was going to be brand new. I'm almost scared to open it, but it is beautiful. It's got obviously the collection details, but tons of great information in it. Um, pictures of, of everything and strewn field information as well. So just yeah. a, a really, really cool book that I'm enjoying. Uh, a little, uh, little coffee table book. That is a beautiful book of his collection. And uh, uh, yeah, the year that he uh, introduced that, I think was 2014. Uh, but he was at the... Uh, the Mike Blood sale and was because, uh, uh, of the book, a, not, a really good one. Yeah, when I determined that Topher didn't have the handbook to uh, or, to meteor meteors and meteorites, it's like okay, we got to fix that now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then th then I had to learn how to read. That was the hard part. So, <laughs> so um, I'm going to give one last look around the horn. If anyone has anything that they want to share. Um, I will definitely give you a, a chance, but we're coming up on two hours and I want to make this thing editable so I can at least get to sleep before 2 a.m. tonight. <laughs> so now I wonder if I can do this. Um, uh, man, I really wish there was a way that I could show all of you guys all at once. You guys oh. all at once. <laughs> uh, let me see Your here. screen might crash. <laughs> let me put that up there and then share let me try something share screen number one and go um see if this works yes we got it to work hey now everyone can see the group all right guys uh once again i, I appreciate everyone attending and sharing their information correcting me when i'm wrong and just adding to the conversation and what I'm calling my YouTube knowledge bull ride. So thanks everyone. I appreciate you guys joining. We'll see you next week. Okay. All right. All right. Good night. Good night, Good night guys. We can actually see everyone this time. <laughs> I like this. Good night. <laughs> All right. Bye guys. Take care, Bye. guys. Stay Bye. safe and well. Yeah. Okay, uh, people hang on for a minute uh, to talk about.